All right, guys, I am sorry, but, you know, I just have so much going on right now, and I've just been getting done what I can, and I haven't been recording it at all, and that's my bad, but, you know, I'm taking pictures along the way for you guys so I can show you guys what I've been up to, but um, this is how far I am, and here are some pictures So, you know, been working away at it. And as you can tell, you know, I got the front fenders on it now. Um, I just finished putting all the coolers in it here in the shrouds. Um, I actually had to unbolt this top piece because the tabs for the radiator right there, if you can see in there, right, right there, you can see that they hang out. So they caught the slope of this. So I had to unbolt that, kind of lift it up. And I actually wasn't even able to put any rubber bumpers on the bottom of the radiator. And uh, as you can see there, it just kind of sticks through. So I'm going to have to try and adjust it probably to fit my fans in there. Because now, you know, it's not got nothing to align it. So it's not in there straight. So I'm gonna have to do something to straighten that, I'm sure. But um, you know, oh well. At least it's in there. You know, this is gonna be really nice to have. And then I also got my AC condenser in there. And I got all my AC lines all ran down there, up to the firewall and all that. And then I even got my heater core lines just hooked up to the water pump. Um, I got my ground cable all routed. I got the battery in there and I have power, so that's good. So all this stuff on this side is, you know, coming along, it's pretty much done. Um, and then we go over here, I got my fuse box put back on the fender and all that. And I actually saw that it said Delphi. So I checked on that truck and Honestly, I'm almost thinking it's been replaced on this. I mean, I have no idea why, but I'm almost starting to think that this thing was in an accident and, you know, didn't have frame damage, surprisingly, or, or you know, whatever. But, you know, I, I don't know. I don't know. It's, it's just some odd things that I've noticed while I've, while I've been building it. But um, I got the steering all hooked up now. And if you guys have been, you know, a true follower and have been watching the whole build so far, you guys will probably have heard me talk about, guys, I don't know where this bolt goes. And for whatever reason, I put it in the header bag and with the header bolts and stuff. Well, it was my steering bolt. And um, so I figured that out now. And um, I got the power steering cooler on here with the lines ran right here. I got these uh, lines right here are for sure, for sure new. And um, this one's old, but doesn't actually look that old. And the cooler actually looks pretty nice yet. It's getting a little worn on the edges, but I mean, honestly the AC condenser wasn't that bad either, but um, this one actually looks really nice and it was all aluminum. So I was like, okay, that's actually better than I thought. So sweet. Slap that on there, and it looks really good with the radiator, too. It's actually really starting to come along. And um, go back up here. Um, I got this little hose, little vacuum hose hooked up to the back of the motor. Um, just starting to tidy up a few little things. I got that ground wire to the back of the head all routed. And, um, you know, since I got the AC on, I got that plugged in, too, right down there. And guys, honestly, the only plug-in I think I really have left is the one right, th well, obviously the front end stuff, okay. But the main plug-in is that one for the mass airflow sensor. Cause you know, I still gotta get my air, air intake put on this. But then I got the radiator fans, uh, plug-ins right there. 
And then, you know, obviously I got my headlight ones and my horn ones, which they, of course, rigged up the horn on that side. And, um, yeah, it's just those, what, five connectors left. And if you guys noticed, uh, I also got my washer fluid tank installed over there. Uh, I got my hood latch all hooked up. And I actually got my shift linkage all hooked up too. So it shifts, it'll steer, um, power steering should be hooked up, um, brakes should be all hooked up. I mean, I did that right away when I put the cab on it. Um, AC should be all hooked up. And um, yeah, we're really knocking her out, guys. You know, whole voltage system should be all hooked up. Actually, I disconnected the ground because this battery is already getting really weak. So, you know, I wanted to make sure like, you know, it might still be good enough to start it, but I'm not sure. So, we'll just have to see about that. So anyways, I, um, that's my old transmission cooler. And, you know, I kind of wanted a new one anyways, cause that one, you know, guys, all my coolers were in the danger zone right here. My whole core support was right here which was really stupid because I was sandblasting right here and all that sand came over and landed right there. Like, guys, this is how bad it was. This is still all sand. I mean, I never did try and blow off the toolbox just because there was so much stuff on it. So this is the only spot that never got cleaned. But um, all the other stuff, the sand's cl been cleaned off of. But um, I was like, you know what, screw it. I just want, you know, new condenser, new radiator might as well hook up the other coolers and get those too so um when i looked it up and i was just about to order it my dad's like you know it's actually a good thing that you're doing that because um like transmission guys they say that the number one cause when they put a new transmission in to have it not last as long or you know go out right away or go out soon is because of that bad fluid still being in your lines and in your cooler and stuff but you know this way with uh replacing everything i got new transmission lines right there right next to the oil cooler lines but um you know new new transmission new transmission cooler new radiator new transmission lines so the transmission lines go right up to the radiator go through the radiator into the heavy duty cooler and back uh and return to the transmission and then um got the nice power steering cooler uh, i i did notice this is like my first truck basically um which you know you guys never saw it but it was a 2000 2500 sierra gmc so um you know three quarter ton and this basically has the same cooling as it which is really cool, and um, while on the camera, it almost looks, it almost blends in a little bit with the white, and you can actually see through it a little bit, but barely, but yeah, no, that looks really good, and actually, I don't know if I showed you guys that, um, I got the new cooler right here, so this is going to look really good, the only black cooler on the front, oh, the power steering cooler, I suppose, but um, yeah, I, I mean, at least it'll match the shrouds, so that'll be pretty good right there. And um, looking all pretty and nice. And um, yeah, guys, it's really coming along. So now with the radiator in there, like I said, the transmission cooler needs to go on. All the transmission lines, all the oil cooler lines, and then all my coolant lines right there. And then I got a little EVAP thing that comes off of this valve cover. That just goes into my cold air intake, which, you know, still got that left, and my uh, mass airflow sensor. But um, that bottle looks like crap. So I'm going to look up one of those tomorrow, and, you know, if it's like 100 bucks or so, I'll just buy it because that one, that one looks rough. I know that you'll never see it, but, um, you know, I, I just need a new one after seeing that because that thing looks crusty. You know, I, I want it to look like that. So, you know, doesn't matter, but it does to me. So, 
I'll just be looking that up. And, um, you know, plus it's already 2 o'clock right now. That's why I'm kind of all over the place. Um, so, yeah. Anyways, I just got a few more lines to run to the radiator. Um, you know, the radiator hoses and the transmission and oil cooler lines, like I just said. And then, um, since it doesn't have gas in it, I think what I'm going to do, um, so, you know, I don't have to unplug anything. I'm just going to crank it over. Um, I mean, and the, no, that shouldn't be that bad for the pump. Maybe. Um, you know, I, I might just put fuel in it anyways and just unplug the coil packs. Um, just so, you know, I'm not just trying to pump air through my brand new fuel pump. Um, but anyways, I, I want to do that and not start it right away, but crank it over. So, um, there's the new fuel pump right there. So, um, the motor gets nice and oiled up and then I can start it. Cause, um, you know, I don't really want to start it dry. I'm sure that's not good for the bearings at all. So, um, you know, get some oil circulating through there and then, you know, go ahead and fire it up. Also, you know, make sure it sounds good cranking over and all that stuff. And then it should be ready to fire. I mean, guys, good old Chevy here. It was actually really easy to wire up compared to, well, I'll compare it to my Polaris Predator and my Honda Accord that I used to have. Um, if you guys haven't seen those builds, go check them out in the playlist. But those had the same connectors on the same wiring harness right next to each other. So it was really easy. You could, you know, if you weren't paying attention, you could switch them up. Like, say, like, this and, like, you know, or, like, the coil pack and the injectors were the same plug-in. But, yeah, no, not on a Chevy, so it was actually, I mean, like, you know, I'm sure they got the same plug somewhere, like, you know, like, this one being the same as, like, this one or that one over there, but, I mean, like, you know, it's, you know, you'd miss it. You wouldn't mess it up and plug it into something else, basically. Um, is what I'm trying to say. So, I mean, everything should be wired up besides these last few that I got, which is no big deal. And guys, this thing should be running tomorrow night. So I'm super excited. And I figured I had to give you guys an update just because, well, I mean, I've done so much. And, and um, yeah, I figured it's about time. So... I don't know, guys. I might try and pick up the camera more, but it's totally different when you guys are seeing this. But for me, right now, um, I was daily uploading for 45 days, and I just stopped. And I uploaded the day after I missed, and then I may have uploaded one more time, and I, I haven't uploaded for almost a week now. So I'm sorry about that, guys, but hopefully by the time you're seeing this, I'm probably back up to daily uploading. Um, but it's just, guys, I have so much going on right now, so you guys just got to bear with me. And also, getting this thing done, like, you know, the past week, week and a half, I've stayed up all night for at least three uh, nights. So, you know, I, I don't feel like doing an all-nighter tonight. Otherwise, you know, I'd just be grinding it out. But when I came out here, honestly, guys, I mean, <laughs> as silly as it sounds, I was a little overwhelmed at working on it for whatever reason. I don't know. I've already come this far. But, um, yeah, I'm just, like, it's, like, slowly draining me at this point. Like, you know, a week ago, whatever, you know, I was fine, you know, building the motor, like, on grind time. But I only got till monday so it's tuesday i got like five days to actually like fully get this thing out of here and running which is no big deal i'll have it running tomorrow night i'm not too worried and then honestly i might just put it back together for now um but also at the same time i really just want to get the body done i did order clear coat so i can actually have some good clear coat for the body 
so it won't, you know, run on me and stuff. Um, so that the body will actually turn out really good. I ordered that from Summit. Um, but I might need some more epoxy. I'm not sure yet. Um, but probably to finish the whole body. Um, but then, guys, this thing should be a driver. And I haven't heard anything about the new lift kit. So, unfortunately, that's probably going to, you know, barely come in time. Or it won't even come in time. Which sucks. But, I mean, I'm not too concerned. I mean, she's sitting pretty good the way it is. And at least this way. I mean... It's still illegal the way it is right now, but at least I'll still be able to drive it and maybe get away with it, hopefully. So uh, I'm just hoping to be able to drive it for a little while, you know, you know, actually use the new parts instead of have it a show truck and only be driven 500 miles a year or something like that um, when I have all this into it, so. I'm hoping that, you know, maybe I will be able to drive it a little bit. But at the same time, I really just want to get the body done because I got a lot of other stuff to do. And um, I actually brought the new grill out here, too. I had that on there, but I don't think it took a picture. But now it'll look so much better with the coolers in there. So anyways, I'm going to call it a night right there. And I will catch you guys tomorrow night. And guys... We're going to get this thing running. All right, guys. So it is the next night now. And I have came to a realization. Plus, I also talked to my dad about it. And uh, I just brought it up to him because I was like, yeah, my, my radiator barely fit. And, you know, the whole rubber insulator situation, how I didn't put those in because, you know, it just was too tight. He's like, well, you know, that that's not good because... That's going to wear a hole in your radiator, and you're going to need to replace it, uh, you know, maybe in like a year or, or so. So I was like, well, oh, crap, I don't want to do that again, um, especially once it's, you know, eight inches taller. So I'm going to be taking it back apart and grinding off the that end for that bracket because these brackets are too far over or something. And same with the bracket on this side. You can see it right there. Just how far over it is. So they they messed up by overlapping it. But if it wasn't overlapped, it probably would have fit just fine. I mean, actually, I think the corners were kind of close. But I'm going to trim that off right there. Should just need a, you know, basically go back to the bend just right in there. I'll probably mark it before I pull it out, but do that, pull it out, and then I can put my little rubber insulator thingies back in right here. There's that one. And then this one. Nope, that's not it. Here it is. So, and also another really big thing is, is because when you look like this, the radiator is not level anymore. So it's going to be hard to put my fans in because I'm pretty sure it just kind of like hooks on the little lip right there or something like that and just kind of sits in there. And then bolts. I'm not exactly sure where it bolts up to because someone else took it apart. But it'll just line right up to where it's supposed to be. Probably just inside right there. So no big deal. Um... But I do got to take it out and modify it, which, you know, I really should have done the first time, but oh well. I'm hoping I don't have to fully take this off just because, you know, I don't know why this cooler, this AC condenser seems, at, well, it is like, you know, it's supposed to be an OE replacement, okay? Um, and... I don't know why it looks so aftermarket and stuff in like a performance cooler, which is cool and all, but it wasn't meant for my transmission cooler to mount to. So that was kind of tr uh, pretty tricky to get in there, but it's not cross threaded and I got it tightened, but I really don't want to undo it uh, because it was kind of tricky to line up. But I was able to get the radiator in there the first time by just kind of pulling up on this by loosening all. I had to take these two out and loosen all six of those. And, 
Yeah, so I'm hoping I can slip it back out, uh, trim up the brackets, and hopefully it slides back in with those little rubber insulators this time. So that's the plan. And once I get the radiator fitting with those, so I don't have to worry about it <laughs> going bad, um, then I can probably start working on my lines right here and working towards getting it running again. So I just got to fix this and um, then I'll be on my way. So I'll get back to you guys once it fits. All right, guys. So... I'm going uh, to be wrapping it up for the night, so I'm just going to give you guys a little update of what I got done. So I got all the coolers on there, transmission cooler, um, the radiator still um, hits the core support, but I mean, it's in there now. Um, and I got all the transmission lines ran all right there. You can see down here, all three of them right there. All the way back to the transmission. Which is, yep. <laughs> I don't feel like showing that. But, uh, yep. You can see it all. So, there's actually little adapters that go in there. Because the radiator itself is threaded. I'm assuming older trucks, you know, take threaded lines. And then a little adapter. And then these push-in lines now. So, that's no big deal. And it's basically all ready to go. So I just got to bolt down the oil cooler line, do the cooling system, and then put my air intake on, and then add fluids. And this thing should be ready to run. So I guess I'll be getting all that stuff done tomorrow night. So that being said, I'll catch you guys tomorrow.